your Bibles and meet me in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. I love how God does a thing because pastor pretty much preached my message and her remarks. And so I know that this is a sure word from God for his people. Are you there in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 24 through 29? If you're there, would you shout with a loud voice, I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat up on that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat up on that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. For the next few moments, I want to preach into your spirit this word, Jesus Christ, the sure foundation. Can you tell your neighbor, say neighbor, Jesus Christ is the sure foundation. Spirit of the living God, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence that dwells richly in the midst of your people. Thank you for this opportunity to stand and declare what it is that you, the Spirit, would say to your church. Today, I, Barbara, decrease that you might increase. Think through my mind. Speak into my ear and give me what it is that you desire to say. Thank you for your word that goes into every crevice of our lives and makes our way straight. We give you glory, honor, and praise for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. On your way down to your seat, say it again. Jesus Christ, the sure foundation. My assignment and my objective on the last day of the year. It is for us to inspect the foundations of our lives so that the things we build, not just in 2024, but for the rest of our days will last. Somebody shout it back, I want it to last. Shout it one more time, I want it. I want it to last. Several years ago, when I was still living in our family home, as my siblings still operate and live in our homestead property in Hutchins, Texas, I was walking out of the back door one day to run my errands. And as I was walking out of the back door, I saw a crack coming down the back wall. And I knew that it was something to be concerned or to at least to call someone and find out what was going on. And so I called a, a friend of our family, Kenyatta. Kenyatta was kind of like a do-it-all kind of person. He was a contractor to name some of the things. And when I called him, he began to ask me a few questions. He said, Barbara, how wide is the crack? And to which I replied, not wide. He said, how long has it been there? I said to him, not very long. And lastly, he asked, 
is the wall separating from the wood border on the floor. And I said, I can't, I can't really tell. And so he scheduled a time within the next few days to come by and as he came through the house, he began to examine other rooms and he walked around the outside of the house. And he said to me, he said, the reason why you see the crack is because the foundation is shifting. Right. He said, the floors are moving and you need to stabilize the foundation because plaster alone can't fix this. The Lord has given me a prophetic word before leaving this year that will help us to identify the cracks in our lives. And not just in our lives, church, but everywhere that we look around, we see cracks in our families. We see cracks in our relationships. There are cracks that are in the government and even in our churches. And unfortunately, some kind of way, we think that we can replaster the situations. We think that we can just patch it up. And we think we can do this by putting the right politician in office. We think we can plaster it by establishing programs, by being in the right relationships, or just making enough money. But I want to tell you today, if you would lean in and listen, that that is only patchwork. It's only patchwork. And today, before we enter into 2024, we need to have a come to Jesus meeting. Come on. Come on, church. Let's, let's pull off all of the facades and let's just have a come to Jesus meeting. And we need to be brutally honest and admit that in some way in all of our lives, we have become professional patchers. Bishop Ford, I know that's not a real word, but for the sake of my point, please allow me to be grammatically incorrect for just a moment. We have become professional patchers. And this is the person that has the mindset that if it's not broke, don't fix it. This is the person that has the mindset that I'm going to keep patching up my low self-esteem. And the need for validation by buying more stuff. This is the person that's sitting in the room today. That says I'm going to keep patching up my marriage. By taking more selfies. And posting them on Facebook. To try to prove to the world that you are indeed a relationship goal. I'm going somewhere. We, we are professional patchers. Because we patch up the dysfunction in our families. And we do this by remaining silent about issues. And here it is, when you do this, it's as if everyone is pretending that your last name is the Huxtables. All of these wonderful movies that we see about perfect families. And here it is. This is what the Lord said to me, Bishop. These professional patchers, these are the people that at the end of every year, you begin to talk about who you're leaving in 2023. How many friends I'm cutting off. How many haters I'm leaving behind. But if the truth be made known, you have or you lack good people skills. Y'all may not like the preacher, but, but we have security all around the church just in case you try to jump me when it's over. The truth of the matter is, it's really not them, it's you. 
and you don't have the skills nor the patience and so it becomes easier to remove them than restore them it's easier to have a flight and not a fight response and can I tell you the real deal? The real deal is sometimes people thrive in drama over peace. God help me to plow through this. People, people are not happy unless there's confusion going around. You find yourself in everybody's business. You, you are the one in the comments section on Facebook that's stirring up the trouble. And if you just stop commenting, and if you just stop sharing it, and if you just stop posting about it, people would know the business that they know. And I'm not sure if you remember, but two weeks ago, Pastor Chris profoundly taught us that peace isn't found, it's made. Somebody shout in this church, it's patchwork. It's patchwork when we are patching up spiritual decline. When we patch up spiritual decline with prayerlessness and churchy posts and powerless praise breaks. Let me rewind it and say it again. I said we have become professional patchers in the church when we post Things that sound spiritual. And we have a lot of praise breaks without power. It looks good on the camera. It goes viral across social media. But praise should release a power not just in the church. But when you don't have a musician in your house. Praise will release power wherever you are. We have began to look spiritual because it is easier to look spiritual than to be spiritual. And today I came under the unction of the Holy Ghost to find a few honest people that would say before this year is up, I am tired of being a professional patcher. I'm tired of faking it. I'm tired of going through the motions. In all 2023, some of you have patched a smile on your face. When deep down inside you have been broken. But on the last day of the year, before we enter into 2024, the Lord said to tell the church to revisit the foundations of your life. To revisit the foundation because if the foundation is not solid church, you can forget about building anything worthwhile. Can you tell somebody, I want my foundation to be solid? Come on, come on, talk to somebody. Let's make some declarations. Tell them, I want a solid foundation. Not just when I'm in this building. But when I leave the church, I want my life to be solid. This is what brings us to our text. It brings us to this scripture where we see Jesus. He is still in the early stages of his ministry. We see Jesus in this chapter and in this, in this book of Matthew that he has been baptized by John the Baptist. He has also been validated by heaven with hearing the voice of God saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In chapter number seven, we see that he comes from being validated and baptized to now being led into the wilderness. And he goes through this wilderness experience. And as he comes out of it, can I just walk you through the text for just a moment? As he comes out of it, he begins preaching sermons on the mount. And he is now imparting into his newfound followers and disciples. He is not necessarily telling them about him. He is imparting into them 
biblical truth. And as you read this entire chapter in your study time, you will find Jesus talking about everything from judging and hypocrisy. He talks about discernment. He talks about love and he talks about prayer. And in verse number 12, if you're taking notes today, you will see that he gives us what is considered to be the golden rule. He says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Somebody shout, he's laying a foundation. He is, he is laying this foundation of the kingdom of God. He teaches them about the straight and the wide gate and even warns them of false prophets that will come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are wolves. And I, I don't want to park here too long, but as a prophet of God that did not call myself, it is alarming to see so many Honorable Christians that will believe a fly-by-night prophet. Yeah, y'all, y'all gonna get stiff because I'm getting ready to just bust some of it up right here. To to believe a fly-by-night prophet. Yeah, P R O F I T. The, the, the ones who will slide into your DMs with a word. And there you go falling out in the floor of your house. Because you were gullible. And the truth of the matter is, they didn't get that word from God. They got it from your Facebook. You told them all of your business. They studied your name. Y'all ain't talking to me. So some of them, when they call your name in the service, it didn't come from God. God, I feel like busting this up now. It, it didn't come from word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Some of this stuff has come from those who were to be prophets, but they are psychics and they are making great damage in the kingdom of God. Mm. Uh, I want to tell you that these false prophets will try to lure you from up under the pure anointing that's in this house. And they will spiritually manipulate you because there is simply, here it is, there is a breed of spiritual junkies. I don't even need no plane ticket to leave. I'm going right down the street and around the corner. There, there, there is a breed of spiritual junkies. Have you ever seen a junkie before? Have you ever been a junkie? Y'all don't have to wave your hand. You, you got a family member that there, there's a junkie somewhere in your bloodline. What you know about a junkie is they don't care if the needle is clean or dirty. I'm trying not to leave y'all today. They, they, they don't care if they have integrity or not. Just put something in my vein and make me shout. Put something in my vein and make me run. Give me a word that by 2024, God is going to give me a million dollars. You're not even a tither. How do you receive those kind of words and shout over them? I feel like preaching today. You may not say nothing. There's another preacher coming tonight. But I came to bust this stuff up. Because some of you have been led astray by false prophets. Mm. Make my soul jump. Make me shout. Make me shout. Don't, don't talk about my soul. Just focus on my stuff. Jesus told them that you will know a true prophet not by him spelling your last name but you will know a true prophet 
by their fruit. I'm, I, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the church out of this personality-driven fly-by-night kind of situation. He says that you will know them by their fruit. And here it is, here it is, because you wonder what's going on in your life and why your life is topsy-turvy. It's because you received a word from somebody that you didn't inspect their fruit. I'm, I'm only preaching the Bible. You, you received a word from somebody that you didn't know if they were married with a girlfriend or if they were married with a boyfriend. And, and I want to tell you that you hear the word, the true word of God in this house week after week. And you should receive it. Why? Because you know the fruit of our leader. I wish I had a greater. Thank you, my sister, for standing up. You know the fruit. So tell these chokers, get out of your DM. God, help me now. Tell them to stop asking you to send a seed into ministries that are not cut ground. I came to drive this chunky spirit out of the church. Tell them you have a pastor that gives you a sure word. And sometimes, Pastor Joseph, the people can't receive it because it's not spooky enough. God, I, I said I wasn't going to park here long. It's, it, it don't have the right, it don't have the right kind of uh, 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 mysticism attached to it. And some of these prophets, I'm getting ready to move, I promise you. Some of these prophets, it is not that they have tapped into the Holy Ghost. They have tapped into mysticism. They have tapped into divinations. They are psychics in disguise. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you won't know that. Push somebody and tell them this year you got to look beyond the words and inspect the fruit. You didn't tell nobody. Tell them, tell them, look beyond the words and inspect the fruit if it quacks like a duck it's a duck if it barks like a dog it's a dog if it talks like a hireling it's a hireling but if it talks like God it has fruit that remains mm, I feel like preaching Jesus in this text he is laying somebody shout a foundation in verses 21 through 23, can I, can I walk you through the text some more? He, he talks about the true and false claims of his lordship. And he tells them that everyone who says of me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my father. And it's in this same setting church that we see him proving to be a master teacher. He is now telling them of the parable of two men who heard the same word, built similar houses, but with different foundations. I, I want you to take this word house and I want you to note it in your mind and your spirit that house is interchangeable with life. He says in verse 24 of Matthew 7, again, therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his life upon a rock. Jesus shows us there are two things that are primary to establishing a strong spiritual foundation. And it is hearing mm -hmm, and doing. He says it is hearing and doing. And most of us don't have a problem hearing. It's, it's the doing that gets us in trouble. 
Let, let me give you a real life illustration. Uh, I have an adorable grandson named Dallas. Dallas is in children's church. He's seven years old. And Dallas has superb hearing. Come on, parents, grandparents, don't, 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 sit, don't sit this one out. He has superb hearing. As a matter of fact, pastor, I could be in my room and he's in the game room upstairs and I can call his name and he comes running. So his hearing is impeccable. But when his mother or I tell him, turn off the TV, turn off your Nintendo Mario Switch, his now obedience is delayed mm -hmm. because his flesh is getting ready to make a decision that his behind can't cash. Some of y'all have no idea what I'm talking about today. His, his, his obedience is selective and what he don't know is he is working on his butt getting ready to cash this check that it really can't handle. In other words, we have to put the board of education, come on now, on the seat of understanding. God, I don't know if I can say this in 2023. In other words, we got to beat his behind. Y'all ain't talking. You told Harpo to beat me. Yes, I sure did. Sometimes you got to drive the devil out. Not with words, not with gentle parenting, but sometimes you got to stand up and tell him, I double dog tell you to do that again I felt that I felt that look in my memory I felt that ah God I can't tell it on myself but you know I'm, I'm saved now I'm, I'm, I'm washed now and Tammy won't tell you but there was a time that I wasn't always saved I know you don't believe it just keep your keep your focus on where we are now but there was a time that we would sneak in windows at the house. And, and, and Bishop, I knew that the rapture had not come if I walked in my daddy's room and he was still laying in the bed. Y'all ain't talking. But sooner or later, some kind of way, maybe the Holy Ghost or one of my siblings ratted us out and told him what was happening. And sooner or later, he got his boy, not a figment of your imagination. He got his real boy. And he said, if you think you're going to come in this house when you want to come in, and if you think you're going to sneak in the house that has toys to it, I'm going to show you that it ain't going to happen. Some of y'all scared. You scared, you scared, you scared of your children. They're taller than you, so you're scared. Y'all may have to edit this on the clip, but I want to tell you that God says if you spoil, if you spare the rod, you're going to spoil the child. I'm, I'm showing my culture now. Let, let me move away from that. I, I said all of that to say, Pastor. That God has a way, my brother, of getting us into shape until we will hear and obey. Oh, pass it down your row and tell somebody, you've got to obey God. Come on, come on, shake him if you have to. You've got to obey him. You heard him tell you the first time. You don't need another confirmation. You don't need another prayer partner to touch and agree. You know he called you. You know he's commissioned you. You've got to hear and obey. God help me. Bishop in my prayer time. I heard the Lord say that 2024 belonged to those who will swiftly obey his word. Some of y'all gonna miss that. You won't, you won't get it in the summertime. But he said, tell this house that he's going to send favor on those who will swiftly obey. I don't have it figured out. I don't have all the money to accomplish it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but all I have is a word. And I'm stepping into it. Push somebody and tell them swiftly obey him. No. 
every year you create another vision board and there's nothing wrong with a vision board but it's time to get the vision off the board and swiftly obey him God help me now you've got to be found in the sanctuary swiftly serving him we don't have time to peg you to use your talents you give it to your job you got to be found swiftly swiftly obeying him apologize when you're wrong swiftly you don't need to sleep on it you don't need counseling for it Make right your wrongs and do it. Somebody shout swiftly. I'm almost there. Jesus in this text, hallelujah to God. He shows us, here it is church. He shows us the importance of our foundation. Can we look at this just a little closer? He said what made this person wise is if he hears and obeys and builds on the rock. Somebody shout the rock. This, this word rock refers to a large outcropping of the rock. It is the bed rock. And while one man built his house on the sand, the other dug deep. He dug until he built his life on something that was solid. Solid as a rock and nothing changes it. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He built his house on this rock and building on the rock speaks of people who hear the gospel and believe it to the point that they build their lives on it. It's the same rock that is mentioned in Matthew 16, 16 through 18. When Jesus is in a conversation with his disciples and he wants to know whom do men say that I am they begin to say that some say that you are Elijah some say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets and then he turns it to them and he says but whom do you say come on church that I am and Simon Peter the cusser Simon Peter the fighter see see it's the ones that's really not all the way saved that sometimes have a greater revelation of who he is than you do because they know if you did not get me out of that I was getting ready to kill somebody sometimes the people that you don't think match up to your religious preference sometimes those are the ones that can point you to him better than you can yourself oh he says thou art the Christ you're the son of the living God and he says unto him blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah the flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my father which is in heaven and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock not on Peter but upon the foundation that you spoke of I'm going to build my church I feel like preaching and the gates of Hades shall not stand against it I want you to hear me now for there are a lot of people Bishop who think the Bible has some good stuff to tell us but they also believe there's a lot of other truth that's just as good as the scripture. Come on, come on. I'm getting ready to lose some of y'all there, there. There are people that believe that there are other good books with great wisdom. And certainly you should read books. But the danger is when God becomes secondary and your books become first. It's getting ready to get tight right here. Let me, let me give it to you another way. There's a danger, Pastor Travis, when we try to use our intellectual mind to unravel spiritual matters. That there's a danger when we try to mix human reasoning into God's reasoning because we believe that they are both equally the same. Oh, but I want to tell you that there 
is no other book that can tell you your whole life other than the P-I-P-L-E. I wish I had. I wish I had some old school people. I said there is no other gospel that can change your entire life other than the word of God. And this is where preaching gets slippery. This, this is where the preaching slope gets real slippery because there were those who preach more about principles and strategies and 12 steps to success more than they do biblical theology. Some of y'all gonna sit this one out too because I'm coming right down your road. You, you, you hear preachers that preach and tell you that you're coming out but never tell you how to stay out. God is getting tight in this house. I, I, I feel your attitude, but that's fuel to a prophet's fire. You listen to people to tell you how to get out of debt and that has its place. But you need a word that will fix your mind, not just your money. Oh, somebody shout, we need the foundation of the word. Yeah, 2 Timothy 4 and 3. And the message Bible says that you're going to find that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching. But will fill up on spiritual junk food and catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. They will turn their back on the truth and chase mirages or delusions. And that's why the church is so lukewarm. Because there's a not, not enough Bible to tell you that you got to make a decision. God help me, I'm getting ready to come down your road. You can't stand on the side of the world and on the side of the church. You can't listen to music that make you drop it like it's hot and stay down there till it's cold on Saturday and come in here and shout on Sunday. You gotta make a decision and the word will help you do that. God help me to plow. I want to tell every preacher. I want to tell every Pfizer minister. That you got to preach the word. Even if it costs you your life. You got to preach the word. And you have not preached it. Until you mention his name. You have not preached the gospel. Until you mention the name of Jesus. And we have so called preachers. That will preach full sermons. But never mention his name. But I want to tell you. That you got to preach his name. Because that's the sure foundation. Somebody open your mouth. And shout I need to know. Who Jesus is. I say I preach Jesus. For he said unto us. A child is born. And a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called. Excuse me, I'm not happy. His name shall be called. Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. John the Baptist. Preach Jesus. When he says, I baptize you with water. But among you stands the one that you know not of. He is the one who comes after me. And the straps who sandals I'm unworthy to tie. And if that wasn't enough, Jesus, preach Jesus. He says, I am the one. 
says if you build it upon his name, you ain't talking to the right name. Say name. The only way your business is going to last is if you build it upon his name. Somebody shout Jesus. to take a, I needed to take a pulse of this house. I needed to take a break to find out if you still believe that he's the wine, the truth and the light. No man comes to the Father but by him. Grab somebody and tell him I still, I still believe in Jesus. He's my anchor, he's my shield, he's my buckler, wheel in the middle of the wheel, now is priming, bright and morning star, he heals cancer, he heals diseases, somebody shout his name. You said that too common. You said that like you was talking about your mama. And yes, your mama is wonderful. And yes, your last name has weight. But there is no other name in heaven and in earth like the name of Jesus. Demons tremble. How is nervous at the name of Jesus? Push somebody and tell him his name still works. I'm trying to reprogram us because you shout on stuff and you dance on hype but you better build your life on the sure foundation. What's his name? What's his name? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Somebody shout it out. Oh yeah. I'm almost done. Tell somebody, tell them that the only way your business is gonna work, tell them you gotta build it on his name. In the middle of a recession, the only way you gonna have favor is you gotta build it on Jesus. Bishop Pastor, for the last 13 years, I'm, I'm, I'm put a put a put a put a comma right there. We coming back for for the last 13 years. This church has been established. This year we celebrated 13 years as a church. Come on, come on. That's a good place. And and here we go, building again. We have wonderful members. We have people in person and those that stream. We have a wonderful worship team. We have the baddest band this side of heaven we have the greatest leaders but I want to tell you that this church wasn't built on that some of y'all missed the whole point of the sermon you you can't build the church on the backs of people you gotta build it on the sure foundation so when the winds began to blow and the membership fluctuates and you keep your tithing we will not go under because we built it on the solid rock somebody shout he's the solid rock you ain't shouting shout to hell here's you shout to your bills here you shout to your pain here's you here the solid rock the songwriter says you may build great cathedrals large and small
small you you can build skyscrapers grand and tall you may conquer all of the failures of the past but only what you do for Christ will last tell somebody else tell them build it right build it right build it right build it right if you gotta tear it down and build it again build it build it right I'm almost done I'm almost done I want you to get this now because the Lord Bishop told me prophetically on this New Year's Eve that we are moving into a time and pastor you confirmed it that like never before the church must know what you know hear me you must know what you know you you have to have the right foundation because there's a storm coming uh, there, 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 there are many storms that are coming next year and the devil is after our children he's after our church and news outlets are telling us to prepare for world war three and in prayer at 5 a.m. one Tuesday morning, the Lord showed me that in the offices of the White House and in, in the offices in other countries, that they literally have sent missiles to target America. You better hear me. They have literally began to come up with a plan for war against this nation. And I want to tell you that while the blood is running warm in your vein, you better make sure your foundation is stable. I know I keep saying it because I want more than your ears to hear. I want your spirit to hear. Touch three people around you and tell them make sure, make sure your foundation is stable. Jesus tells the disciples that everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his life on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and great was the fall of it one man built his house, hear me, his entire life on the sand. That, that means he built it with little to no consideration of Jesus being the center in his life. For who in this church would be honest and say that you want to dig deep down to get to the bedrock if you don't have to? It takes more faith. To build your life on a God that you can't see. Come on and talk to me. But I want to tell you that sand is unstable. Sand is changing. It's moving. And people who build their lives on the sand. They hear the gospel and choose to save themselves. They hear the word and choose to follow God on their own terms. They, they build their lives on self-will and, and self-fulfillment and self-sufficiency and self-satisfaction and self-righteousness. People who build on the sand don't like structure. <laughs> I'm getting ready to find some of your, I'm getting ready to help you to identify who's in your circle. People who peel on the sand, they don't like commitments. And they certainly won't sacrifice. So you can't ask them to stand in faith with you when you're in the trial of your life because they are sandy people. And some of you in here, you are frustrated because you are trying to build solid lives with sandy people. People you thought you could depend on. I'm almost done. People you thought you could confide in. And those that had your back. But you turned around to find out they were nowhere to be found. Because they are sandy people. And you can ask pastor. You can ask bishop. 
And they will tell you, and all the pastors in this house will tell you that it is hard to build areas of this church with sandy people. They sign a card. They shake your hand. They join the church. But they're in today and out next week. People who can turn it on and off like flipping a switch. People who like instant results and instant rewards and instant satisfaction and instant pleasure. They are shallow people who love the heights but hate the depths. I'm going to say that again. They are shallow people who love the finished product. Watch them come back when this building is finished. Watch them. Watch them say, that's my church. But you ain't sold not one doggone nickel to help build the church. Y'all ain't talking. They are people who love the heights, but they hate the depths. Fly by night people that do not give any thought for preparing for difficult times. Somebody shout, Lord. Help me not to build on the sand. Come on, keep talking. I know, I know your, 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 your little emotions are agitated, but your spirit is saying, this is what I need. Come on, open up your mouth and say, Lord, help me. Help me not to build my life on the sand. Finally, and I'm done, I promise. There's only one way to tell if you have built on the right foundation. And that's the storms. The Bible says, Pastor Tina, and the rain fell. And the floods came. And blew and beat on that house. And great was the fall thereof. Storms, believe us, are the only thing that determines if you built it the right way and just to be clear as long as it doesn't rain it don't matter what kind of foundation you built on but sooner or later it's going to rain whether you are a man of god or an atheist it's going to rain and many times in this year that's coming up It's going to rain in your house. It's going to rain in your situation. But you got to make sure. I'm trying to get out of here. That you built on the right foundation. Somebody shout the storms are coming. Come on tell somebody. I know you don't want to hear about it. But tell them there's another storm. That's on the ocean. And it's moving. This whole way. In your soul, not angered in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Tell somebody, sure up the foundations. Come on, you ain't talking. Come on, put a witness in this house. Tell somebody, get you a real prayer life. Sure up the foundation. Tell somebody, turn that plate over. Sure up the foundations. There's a storm. Everybody stand.